Hello everyone, welcome to Lukman IS. So today we are going to have the Hindu newspaper analysis dated 11th of March 2022. So let us quickly see the topics that are important for the day. So these were the important topics from the newspaper today. One of the topic is related to Kudankulam, you know, Kudankulam nuclear power plant project. So we are going to discuss about the Kudankulam nuclear power plant project and we are going to discuss the issues that are going on locally because of the, you know, uh, the facility that, you know, uh, like uh, that helps the Kudankulam nuclear power plant project to dispose of the nuclear waste. Okay, so like people over there are uh, protesting against it and at the same uh, time they have you know raised their voice so we will discuss about you know some of the key issues associated with the nuclear power project in Kudankulam. then the next topic that we are going to discuss is like you know what we know about the newest crea uh, creator uh, like you know on the moon so you know like uh, this is create uh, crater okay so like crater is a kind of I mean like geographical phenomena that happens whenever some alien body or like whenever an asteroid or any body that you know strikes on the surface of a like you know planet or a satellite. So in this case like you know on the uh, like farthest side of the moon which is the southern pole of the moon like one object has a strike and like it has created a crater on the surface of the moon so we will discuss about the newest crater that was formed on the surface of the moon all right then the next topic is related to Dover calls for maritime cooperation okay so here we are going to talk about you know a security conclave where the uh, where the you know national security advisors of various countries have met and they have discussed about greater security cooperation in the maritime region so in this topic we are going to discuss about those people or those countries who have participated and we are also going to discuss in detail about the agenda on which they have discussed the things i mean like we are going to talk about those you know key security cooperations where these countries have deliberated upon then the next topic we are going to discuss about sugar export accelerate on global price rally okay so this is related to indian economy and here we are going to talk about the export sector and sugar as a commodity it was recently exported and as you know like you know global prices of various uh, goods and services has increased recently because of the ongoing conflict between russia and ukraine so indian sugar producers uh, they were i mean like you know they were able to uh, export their sugar produce to the outside world and now they are you know earning huge amount from here so we will discuss in detail about this then next topic we are dis going to discuss about Kremlin hits back at, at Western sanction with expo uh, export bans. So what has happened? Russia has retaliated to the you know steps taken by uh, the Western countries and the United States of America because many of these countries have you know uh, like uh, put sanctions, economic sanctions on Russia. So Russian rubble has you know go, uh, gone down significantly. So that's why Russia has you know hit back. I mean like Russia has retaliated by you know curbing or like by putting uh, putting a ban on the exports of goods and services from Russia to these European countries. And then we are going to discuss about can Donbas republics work as a buffer zone? Okay. So here in this topic, we are going to discuss about many conceptual things related to political science and international relations, where we are going to discuss about like what are de facto states, de jure states, and like, you know, what uh, areas are lying in the Donbas re republics. And we are also going to discuss some of the areas where Russia had, you know, conflict earlier, but like, you know, those areas, uh, like we are going to discuss about the political status of those areas in detail in this article so let us quickly go and see the topics one by one okay so this is one of the you know first topic that we are going to discuss it is kudankulam panchayat adopts resolution against afr so we need to understand what is afr afr stands for away from reactor okay away from reactor means like you know let's consider this is the kudan kulam uh, nuclear power project okay so from here like you know they are generating nuclear power 
right but for generating nuclear power they use some kind of fuel that help these reactors to function but these fuels also release certain kind of i mean by products and these by products are radioactive waste so they have to be disposed of somewhere or in other places but what happens over here that like you know although the reactor is located in the kudam uh, kudan kulam okay the, uh, in this location but the waste disposal facility is not very far away means like it is far away it is located little far away from the kudan kulam nuclear power project but it is not located very far away so the people local people in that particular panchayat area where this particular project is located so they have started raising their voice against the waste disposal uh, disposal facility of the kudan kulam nuclear power project so how it has come about because the chief minister of the state okay chief minister of mk stalin okay so chief minister of this particular state have okay have written to the prime minister of india that like you know the government of india should not go ahead with this particular project in that locality after then there were around 15 ward members i mean like 15 ward members under this particular panchayat they all have written okay the 15 ward members uh, of the village panchayat of kudan kulam they all have written to the uh, you know collector of that particular district where this facility is located that like you know they should stop the uh, you know further disposal of nuclear waste in that particular region and apart from this they have also hinted that they are going to write to the you know chief project uh, like engineer or the chief of the project of nuclear power, uh, this particular nuclear power facility uh, against you know going ahead with the waste disposal facility at the far away uh, far away uh, uh, like away from reactor okay so the thing is the, uh, these people i mean like local people local people who belong to this particular panchayat these people have also hinted that like you know if the chief of this particular project if they do not you know uh, come and discuss with the local people in that case they are ready to go ahead with the i mean like with some kind of protest outside the nuclear facility okay so this is although a political situation that is happening over there but the thing is we need to understand about importance of nuclear power because like nuclear power is the is something that is you know uh, that is we can say that can uh, that can power the future energy requirements as of now we have you know thermal power plants at many locations in india but thermal power plants are coal intensive as you know coal is a non renewable source of energy right so the thing is we have been extracting coal we were using but like those thermal power plants also release huge amount of you know like um, um, environment polluting materials okay they also release pollutants huge amount of pollutants so these nuclear power plants are more efficient power generators and they can generate power for a for a you know wider section of the society but it is one of the project that is, that can be considered as the you know project of the future means like in future most of the power facilities will be con converted into nuclear power because like you know they are more efficient and they are i mean like getting rid of coal but like you know the waste that is being disposed of from here like these waste have a certain radioactive material so like they can cause i mean like you know damage to the local population if it is uh, like you know if some mishappening happens so this is the thing so with this reference you know this article was there so here we need to understand about power sector how power is generated and how waste disposal happens right so what you can read in this article you can read like you know what are nuclear fuel what are different types of nuclear fuel and like what are the kind of waste that are generated from nuclear fuel right what do we mean by you know you know nuclear fission or nuclear fusion reactions okay so that you can read further to understand because in prelims exam they may ask a question related to nuclear fuels like you know different types of uh, like you know radioactive uh, like uh, reactions that happen in these you know uh, nuclear reactors and all 
so we have discussed about this article so with this now let us move to the next topic here in this topic we are going to discuss about crater okay so we are going to discuss about crater on the surface of the moon okay so there was a new crater a crater that was formed and this is the first recorded unintentional case of space junk hitting the moon okay so in this article we are going to discuss about what are craters for example let's consider we have a uh, planet or we have a satellite like moon is a satellite of the earth right it is the natural satellite of the earth so if we talk about you know those satellites let's consider on the middle on the middle or or somewhere right if they have spots like this that are hollow in nature right you know so these are uh, craters are uh, you know something like this i mean like you know so these are depressions like this okay so these are depressions so how these craters are formed whenever some body i mean like some body means like it can be a big rock it can be an asteroid that hits on the surface of the moon okay and after hitting it will go little down and at the same time it will create depression okay bowl like thing okay so newly what has happened on the surface of the moon right a satellite part of a satellite that was launched by china way back in 2014 so it was traveling at a speed of around 9300 kilometers okay per hour that satellite was traveling at a speed of 9300 kilometers per hour it weighs in around 5 tons i mean like it has a large weight it was moving with a very high speed and it has recently hit on the surface of the moon okay that has led to creation of a new crater crater means this kind of i mean um, uh, you know uh, uh, for a whole formation on the surface of the moon so we will understand like how this crater crater was formed we will understand like how uh, they have identified like which satellite has you know st uh, stuck on the surface of the moon like which has impacted the surface of the moon and also we are going to discuss about you know lot more things related to this so now here like you know you you must be knowing that like we do have a moon treaty we have a space treaty we have a moon treaty as well so that moon treaty actually you know it discusses about so i guess that moon treaty belongs to 1967 that treaty discusses about that any country in the world can do certain kind of you know like scientific exploration on the surface of the moon they can go there they can you know set up their research stations and they can bring back some of the materials from there for study and scientific exploration purpose yes, but like none of the country can go there and can claim that this particular territory belongs to us means like it is considered as a common heritage of humanity okay what it is considered as it is considered as common heritage of humanity so i'm writing here common heritage of humanity so this i mean moon does not belong to a specific country from earth right it is a satellite of earth it is a natural satellite of earth that's why under the moon treaty it was declared that moon is a common heritage of humanity none of the country can claim that this particular region belongs to us because like they have visited the first right so this is the thing so it is a common heritage of uh, humanity so sovereignty cannot be established or it cannot be claimed on the surface of the moon okay this is one thing apart from this like uh, so this is one of the point that you should learn in detail means like you should learn about the moon treaty this is a very important thing okay apart from this we need to talk about the space debris okay what are the space debris for example you know uh, many countries including india like united states of america russia china india japan so they do have their own space agencies okay they send their satellites they send their spacecrafts on the space they send their spacecrafts on the surface of the moon also they send it to you know other planets as well we had a mars orbiter mission which is mangalyaan right so we have sent a mission to the mars as well 
but the thing is are all these space objects I, uh, like you know satellites or space vehicles does or uh, does all this space vehicle come back to the surface of the earth no many of these missions like you know have a lifetime on the orbit after then like you know once they uh, like you know cease to be operative so they are abandoned okay they are abandoned means like they remain in the atmosphere and they keep on revolving like a debris means like like a i mean like you know, abandoned object okay so it is a space waste so they keep on moving and if they hit something so it is going to impact that particular thing so recent example this particular example of this particular example of hitting of the surface of the moon by one of the satellite that was launched by china way back in 2014 is an example of a space debris that hits the surface of a natural satellite okay so here although china has claimed that like it uh, like you know this particular object does not belong to china it is also a point of concern because like a space debris is something like uh, that like people are trying to i mean like you know address because in future we are going to have you know uh, nano satellites micro satellites as of now we have uh, we have you know large satellites small satellites but as the progress happens right scientifically so we are going to have a smaller size of satellites and these satellites are going to be you know biggest cause of concern for the atmosphere all right so this is the thing here uh, according to the study that was recently conducted so they have identified that a third stage booster of chang's t51 uh, 5t1 mission okay it it was a lunar mission that was launched by china so it weighs uh, weighs around four tons okay it was moving around at a speed of 9300 kilometers per hour okay and so how it was identified it was identified by one person that person actually runs uh, a blog this blog is known as project pluto okay and this uh, this particular project pluto is run by an astronomer american astronomer his name is bill gray okay so bill gray has identified the trajectory that was followed by this particular object in the you know uh, in the atmosphere or like uh, in the areas nearby the moon because moon does not have an atmosphere okay so he was able to identify this thing by doing reverse analysis so let's consider something has impacted so he has done reverse analysis of the trajectory of the object and he was able to identify this particular thing but the reverse analogy was not done by him all of a sudden he has been monitoring the space debris or a space thing for years all right and uh, in his first prediction what he has done he has predicted that this particular satellite i mean this particular object that has hit on the surface of the moon it belongs to the united states of america and it was a part of a spacex project okay but later on like uh, he has consulted with the nasa and uh, by uh, doing a thorough research and analysis uh, like he come to a conclusion that this particular object belongs to china okay it was part of chang 5t1 mission okay so here uh, this is the thing i mean like all other things are part of the recent happening so you can read about it but like what is important for us to understand here that like you know the craters that are formed on the surface of the moon are of of a more permanent nature than the craters that are formed on the surface of the earth why those craters that are formed on the surface of the earth these craters go through you know lot of processes like you know we have internal like in um, like inside the earth we have plate tectonic movements we do have you know uh, like plate tectonic activities and we have you know uh, activities like volcanism and on the surface of the earth there are many agents of erosion so all of it leads to i mean like deterioration of the craters i mean like craters are uh, not of permanent nature on the surface of the earth when we talk about surface of the moon right what happens on this uh, on moon like there is no atmosphere when there is no atmosphere so like you know there is no erosional agent and apart from this inside the moon there is no volcanic activity i mean like you know there is no what we say tectonic activity as well 
so that's why the craters that are formed on the surface of the moon are of a more permanent nature means like they are going to last as crater for long time to come but on the surface of the earth because of erosion because of volcanic activity because of tectonic movements because of all these regions the they are semi permanent in nature means like you know the craters uh, like you know as the time passes like the remnants of crater uh, you know uh, gets away means like we don't find uh, their information much but on the surface of the moon the craters are of i mean like more permanent nature this is one thing apart from this like if we talk about the moon we do have you know two projects that are active one of the project belongs to nasa the united states of america second project belongs to the uh, earth uh, sorry uh, to india okay so nasa's lunar reconnaissance orbiter this belongs to nasa means united states of america and isro's chandrayaan 2 orbiter these are two active lunar missions and these missions are capable of observing the crater and picturing it okay so these missions will be able to take picture of the crater okay that was formed on the surface of the moon so this is the thing so with this now let us move to the next topic okay so we discussed like what are important things in this particular article here in this article we will talk about the security conclave okay so dobel dobel means ajit dobel he is the national security advisor of india so dobel calls for maritime cooperation fifth nsa level talks of the colombo security conclave concludes in maldives okay so recently what has happened in maldives there was a security conclave what do we mean by conclave conclave means a kind of meeting okay it's a kind of uh, i mean uh, meeting or it's a kind of seminar okay so it was conducted by you know uh, all the participating country so india's national security advisor also participated there so four countries have participated this was the fifth exercise okay so this is fifth national security uh, uh, you know national security advisor level thing okay so here four countries maldives india sri lanka and a new country mauritius has participated okay these are the four countries that have participated and it was successfully concluded okay so in this particular thing they have discussed about five core prominent uh, security challenges and they have discussed about greater cooperation so that these security challenges can be tackled okay so they have discussed about you know five key areas of cooperation okay to enhance and strengthen regional security all right so one of the thing that they discussed about is related to maritime safety and security means safety and security in the maritime region second thing that they discussed about countering terrorism and radicalization okay so we have to counter terrorism and radicalization then third combating trafficking and transnational organized crime okay combating trafficking and transnational organized crime then fourth is cyber security protection of critical infrastructure and technology then fifth is humanitarian assistance and disaster relief hadr okay so they have discussed on these five key areas of cooperation all right so these member states also agreed upon uh, for a road map for further cooperation and collaboration on these pillars okay so this is the thing now the thing is this particular joint meeting so why national security level i mean like you know dialogues are being conducted why national security conclaves are being con um, conducted because like india wants to safeguard its border it wants to safeguard its maritime you know borders as well in maritime region as well as the you know uh, borders with other countries so the national security advisor of india means like he is conducting these conclaves not only with the neighboring countries but also with far away countries so that like we do have greater security cooperation so that like we can tackle any kind of future threats that may be there because of hegemonic tendency of china all right so this is a very important point so we have discussed i mean like you know the previous article that i have shown on this particular issue uh, was uh, taken from the ministry of external affairs and this is from the hindu newspaper okay so like 
here uh, mr ajit doval means like india security advisor he talked uh, he talked about you know four pillars of security cooperation he talked about the marine security human trafficking counter terrorism and cyber security okay he discussed about these four key areas of cooperation with this now let us move to the next topic this is topic number 3 for the day so we are going to discuss about sugar exports accelerate on global price rally weak rupee so what happens acceleration means when something increases at a very fast pace okay when the rate of increase is very high that is known as acceleration so sugar exports have accelerated means like you know the export of sugar has you know increased rapidly increased very sharp okay why because the global prices of sugar has increased means like you know around the world the price of sugar has increased and the value of rupee has decreased when the value of rupee decreases in that case like you know the exporters find it easy to export okay so they get more benefited so that's why sugar exports accelerate on glo global price rally okay and weak rupee so export con uh, contracts for 550000 tons signed in the recent days okay so they have signed about 550000 tons of sugars will be exported okay so here now we need to understand like why uh, the sugar export has increased okay so so sugar exports has increased because of multiple factors one of the factor is nowadays there is lower output okay of sugar production by brazil so brazil is this Uh, largest sugar producer in the world india is the second largest sugar producer of the world okay so like what has happened the output okay output of sugar like you know production of sugar has declined in brazil so for india it is a favorable situation because like you know global price of sugar has increased and like india being the second biggest uh, i mean producer of sugar so it uh, like you know this is a favorable time for india to export the sugar okay so higher exports from the world second big biggest sugar producers okay so this is the region and the shipments will also help india reduce the stock pile and support the local prices of the sweetener crucial in ensuring millions of keen farmers get government mandated prices okay so when export is happening so like you know the sugar producing mill i mean like you know those sugar companies they are going to generate more profit so the sugar cane growers can in turn uh, be benefited okay so you might be knowing that like you know government of india has something known as fair and remunerative price okay right so we have fair and remunerative price and it state adjustment price in case of sugar okay so like sugar is considered to be one of the commodities where the government of india has set a fair and remunerative price for other things we do have minimum support price okay so that's the thing i mean like with export the sugar cane farmers they will be benefited so indian mills have signed you know uh, multiple contracts and uh, this contract amounts to you know 55 lakh uh, 50000 tons of sweetener so they are going to i mean like you know export so this is the thing this is just uh, what we say this is just an update on like in this particular sector now let us discuss in detail about this particular issue okay this is a very important issue and we are going to discuss in detail about it it says can donbas republics work as buffer zone okay so here we are going to discuss some key concepts related to international relations one of the uh, um, concept is known as de facto state okay de facto state then we will discuss about de jure state okay one is de facto states then we have de jure states okay and we are going to discuss about you know these concepts with reference to some of the territories where there were conflicts in the past okay de facto states means those states that in fact i mean in fact means in reality they are sovereign internally 
means like those states that are sovereign internally they govern themselves for all activities internally they are known as de facto states okay de jure state is the second level of a state where like they govern internally themselves and externally also they are sovereign means like they are recognized by international community as a country means like you know we do have a convention if we talk about internationally we do have a convention this convention is known as montevideo convention okay so this montevideo convention actually actually talks about what are states it talks about four key areas that uh, that a region or uh, must fulfill to be qualified as a state okay so one of the thing is uh, like there are four, four key areas one of the key areas is known as like it should have a uh, you know defined geographical territory okay it should have a defined geographical territory second thing it should have a sizable population okay it should have a sizable population third thing it should third thing is like it should have established government some form of government okay it should have some form of government established government fourth is it should be sovereign okay sovereign includes sovereign internally and sovereign externally sovereign internally means for the all their internal affairs they will be able to take their own decision for external affairs okay they should be able to take their decisions without you know external pressure of or without due you know uh, pressure so like four things must be four things must be met by a state to be called as a uh, you know sovereign state so this this is mentioned in the montevideo convention okay so this is the thing so we understood what is de facto states we understood what is de jure state de jure means de facto state can in future become de jure when it gets recognition from many other countries okay in international relations the states that gets recognition from other states are considered as sovereign externally okay so this is the thing so here we are going to uh, so in this article we are going to discuss in detail about few of the regions okay what are the regions we are going to discuss we are going to discuss about this region which is known as abkhazia second region is south ossetia third region is transnistria okay so these are the three regions that we are going to discuss in detail like why these three regions are called as de facto states okay these three regions are known as de facto states it means these three regions are sovereign internally they are governing themselves internally but like they are not sovereign externally and they are not member of the united nations organization okay so these are de facto states these three are de facto states so let us discuss about this thing and in this article we will come across a keyword which is known as prestroika okay we are going to come across a keyword which is known as prestroika so what is prestroika prestroika was a political movement for reformation within the communist party of the soviet union during the late 1980s widely associated with cpu uh, su general secretary mikhail gorbachev and his glasnost policy reform okay so this is prestroika was a political movement in soviet union that was done by one of the leader which is mikhail gorbachev in his glasnost policy reform okay so he was uh, uh, like you know uh, moving for a policy reform that is known as prestroika so we have understood this particular keyword it is important because like russia issues are going on with russia and, and ukraine so that's why it is important for us to understand this thing so these three regions which is abkhazia south ossetia and uh, transnistria these are de facto states okay so these three regions they recognize one another as states but like they do not get recognition from outside countries okay so they recognize one another uh, as sovereign states okay they have their own governments and parliament as well 
the south ossetia and abkhazia they broke away from georgia okay so these two places they broke away means like they came uh, out of georgia and if we talk about transnistria it broke away from moldova this is the thing these two regions these two regions were earlier part of georgia but the third region was part of moldova however all three territories have russia as their patron state they cannot survive without russia's economic political and military support this is the thing i mean like these three regions are being supported by russia economically politically militarily as well but the thing is one of this uh, these uh, three states have you know moved a referendum also to join russia but russia denied okay that time russia did not include it but like all of these regions are pro russian territories okay they are willing to join russia okay so just one of these three regions is not that much willing to join russia it wants to stay independent but uh, at the same time like it needs support of russia to stay you know independent so that's the thing okay so we have discussed about this thing this particular uh, article so this article like you know i have included the entire article so like you know it uh, the core concept here is related to de facto states de jure states and some of the things that are happening so in this article they discuss about like you know that like can donbas republics work as a buffer zone okay buffer zone in the sense the area where the conflict is happening now i mean like uh, the area for which the conflict has started that area is known as donbas region so in the donbas region there are two uh, i mean like part uh, part in the donbas region and those two parts were earlier like you know supported by the russians and russians want that these uh, territories must be recognized as sovereign and independent regions but these were under the political unification of ukraine okay so that's why russia has waged a war against ukraine okay so this is the thing now let us discuss little more about this three regions of ars ars while commonwealth of independent states they are known as you know abkhazia in the northwestern uh, georgia transnistria breakaway state in moldova and this particular thing was also a part of georgia we discussed okay so they are internally sovereign but they are not externally sovereign okay so now in russia and ukraine okay the uh, the i mean like russia has uh, conducted a special military operation this is what russia says russia says a, st a special military operation but the world recognizes it as a war between russia and ukraine okay so one of the solution to settle the crisis over russia's invasion of ukraine is of donbas republics of donetsk and luhansk okay in the donbas region there are two places one is known as donetsk second is known as luhansk okay to follow this model and exist as de facto states means like you know the author is suggesting that like you know these two regions can follow these three states that are de facto jurisdictions that are de facto uh, you know states so if these two regions become de facto states in that case russia will be i mean like you know uh, like uh, so these two states will be independent and the it can become a point of resolution for the ongoing war that is happening okay so that's the thing and if we talk about bbc bbc has reported these three regions as places that do not exist bbc um, you know tells these places as places that do not exist means like do not exist means externally it is not recognized but internally they recognized themselves as like what we say sovereign uh, states okay is how the bbc has described okay so we discussed about it in your free time you can read this article to understand like you know which region is more pro russia which reason wants to have its own sovereignty but like it needs russian support and all so uh, this is important so we have discussed the core concept so if these two regions that are uh, like uh, that are a point of conflict if they also follow the de facto state like situation so it can become uh, i mean like you know a point of resolution i mean i mean like it can give a kind of you know resolution framework for the ongoing conflict that's the thing 
with this we will discuss another topic this is the last topic for the day we are going to discuss this topic so here kremlin hits back at western sanctions with export bans okay so what has happened now kremlin means like from where the russian president actually rules russia okay so what has happened because like russia has you know conducted a special military operation in ukraine okay including the united states of america they have you know uh, retaliated the russians move by putting sanction against russia okay so they have put economic sanctions they have you know isolated russia from the swift network okay so it has led to the you know plunge or like you know devaluation of the russian ruble internationally okay so it has caused economic problems in russia so russia has retaliated the move of the european countries as well as the uh, united states of america and how it has retaliated it has retaliated by putting export bans okay it has put export bans on telecom medical auto agricultural electrical and tech equipment as well as some forestry products okay so it has put export ban on these things so in total over 200 items were included in the export suspension list okay so it will sustain uh, suspend exports of wheat muslin rye barley and corn to the european economic union okay but at the same time okay at the same time russia has not stopped all the kind of you know economic cooperation with other countries because russia has earlier you know come into contract with some of the countries okay so like russia is a major uh, uh, like energy producer so it is a major en energy producer and supplies a third of europe's gas means like you know more than 33% of europe's gas is supplied by russia and russia said like it will continue to export oil and gas in uh, including through ukraine to meet the contractual obligations okay so it is going to uh, fulfill the contractual obligations but it has uh, stopped i mean like stopped uh, what we say like giving it has stopped i mean uh, some of the exports from you know happening and apart from this like recently russia had also declared some unfriendly country list of some unfriendly countries okay so this is the thing this is just i mean like things that are happening i mean like you know these are the things that are happening so we will uh, you can read about the, uh, this topic i mean like you know the south ossetia tra transnistria and uh, these are pro russian then abkhazia so these are the two regions south ossetia and this particular thing so they are pro russian okay so this is the thing with this now let us solve a prelims question let us solve this question so it says consider the following statements one is assertion second is reason craters on the moon are of a more permanent nature than that of earth okay so we have seen in this discussion today like related to moon so this is true second there is absence of atmosphere and plate tectonics in or on the surface or on the moon whereas both are present on or in earth okay on means like when we talk about atmosphere it is on the surface of the earth like our earth if we talk about the plate tectonics that happens below the earth so that's why on and in is written okay to meet the context okay so there is absence of atmosphere on the surface of the moon there is absence of plate tectonics in the uh, you know inside moon so that is true the first part is true second thing is like you know these things are present on earth means like we do have atmosphere we do have plate tectonics this is present in earth so both are true and the thing is this is reason is correct explanation of the assertion okay so a is true and r is the correct explanation of a okay so c is the right answer okay so this is assertion region question that uh, that we framed on the basis of the that discussion okay so that's all that i have to discuss any question so far okay thank you so much everyone for joining the session i hope you have a great day ahead thank you thank you, thank you.